Whipple's procedure is a major abdominal surgery that is done for a group of cancers that occur around the head of the pancreas. These are called periampillary cancers, which include carcinoma of the head of the pancreas, bile duct cancer, duodenal cancer, and ampullary cancer. In addition to cancer surgery, Whipple's is occasionally done for chronic pancreatitis. This is a condition in which you have stones and strictures in the pancreas causing severe pain and sometimes for pancreatic trauma with major pancreatic injury. The pancreas is a very important structure located posteriorly at the back of the body just in front of the vertebral column. It is closely associated with the two great vessels of the body, the aorta and the inferior vena cava, which makes surgery to the pancreas a bit challenging. The pancreas is very closely in relation with the liver and the gallbladder. Likewise, the first part of the intestine called the duodenum, the gallbladder and the bile duct are in very close association with the head of the pancreas, forming a single unit connecting the stomach with the intestine. The main functions of the pancreas include the exocrine function by which it secretes the digestive enzymes which are responsible especially for digestion of fats but also sugars and proteins. In addition, the cells called islets of Langerhans in the pancreas produce the insulin which is the main hormone responsible for the glucose metabolism. The Whipple procedure is generally performed for tumors that occur in the region of the head of the pancreas. In addition, there is another group of smaller tumors called the periampillary tumors which occur at the junction where the bile duct and the pancreatic duct join the duodenum. These are could be duodenal tumors, ampullary tumors or bile duct tumors in addition to pancreatic cancers. Most of these tumors, they once they occur, they actually obstruct the flow of the bile from the bile duct into the intestine. Likewise, a tumor in the head of the pancreas and the periampillary region not just obstruct the bile duct but can also obstruct the pancreatic duct which can lead to new onset diabetes and severe pain in the abdomen which radiates to the back. Likewise, they can sometimes narrow the duodenum as well. Obstruction of the bile duct leads to once the obstruction se secretions of the liver, mainly the bilirubin, they don't reach the intestine. They tend to, the, the blood levels of the bilirubin tends to increase because it's not being secreted into the intestine and then you get something called jaundice which is noticed as a yellowish discoloration of the eye. The Whipple's procedure involves removal of all these structures which form a single unit so as to achieve adequate clearance in patients with pancreatic and periampillary cancers. When a patient comes to us with a pancreatic or a periampillary cancer, the patient initially undergoes a CT scan, EUS and a PET CT scan to evaluate the tumor and confirm that it's limited to the pancreas and not spread beyond it. Once it is done, we go ahead with the surgery. At surgery, if a, in the Whipple's operation, the gallbladder is removed because the blood supply and the innervation of the gallbladder comes from the duodenum and it becomes non-functional after the surgery. Likewise, in addition to the gallbladder, the bile duct is also divided because the bile duct passes through the head of the pancreas, so it needs to be divided and reconstructed. The intestine above the pancreas, we, it can be divided at two levels. One is the pylorus preserving operation in which the first part of the intestine is divided just beyond the stomach. More commonly, we do the classical Whipple's operation in which a part of the stomach is also taken out with the tumor specimen. The next step involves a division of the neck of the pancreas so the head of the pancreas can be separated from the rest of the pancreas. After division of the neck comes a very crucial step that is separation of the pancreas from the great vessels. There are two vessels which pass behind the neck of the pancreas called the supramesenteric artery and the supramesenteric vein. These two vessels give the entire blood supply to the small and the large intestine. These vessels are in intimate relation to the head of the pancreas and frequently involved by the pancreatic tumors. During this crucial part of the operation, the head of the pancreas is meticulously separated from these two vessels. Once that part is done, to remove the specimen, we need to divide the jejunum. The jejunum is the second part of the small intestine beyond the duodenum. The jejunum is divided and the specimen comes out. Once the specimen is out, we have three parts of the alimentary tract which require reconnection. The pancreas, the stomach and the bile duct. First, the pancreas is usually joined to the jejunum by a surgery called a pancreatic jejunostomy. Sometimes the pancreas can be an aspirin of the stomach as well, but most of the time we join the pancreas to the jejunum. 
Likewise, the bile duct is joined to the intestine so that the bile can flow into the intestine called the hepaticojejunostomy. And the third part involves joining the stomach to the intestine so that the food can pass into the intestine. These three new connections complete the Whipple's operation. In summary, the Whipple's operation for the ca cancer of the head of the pancreas or periamperate tumors involves removal of the head of the pancreas, the gallbladder and the bile duct and the duodenum and the first part of the intestine. The, after the surgery, we form three new connections, one of the pancreas, number two bile duct and number three of the stomach to complete the operation and restore continuity. The recovery of the patient from the Whipple's procedure typically takes about 7 to 15 days depending on the age, general condition of the patient and several other factors. Being a major procedure, complications can occur after the Whipple's procedure in terms of the leaks can occur from the pancreatic and the bile duct anastomosis which can lead to intra-abdominal infections, there can be bleeding and sometimes there can be something called delayed gastric emptying in which the patient is not able to tolerate anything by mouth in the first two weeks. But after the initial two weeks, subsequent recovery is usually smooth and the quality of the life of the patient is very good. Because of all these complications, the quoted mortality for women's procedure throughout the world ranges between 2 to 5%.